Hi everyone, my name is Ranger Brian and I'm standing here at the museum front desk. Uh, not too long ago we asked you to send in some questions for rangers to answer and here we have your answers. Hi there everyone, my name is Gretchen. I'm a ranger here in Zion National Park and I'm here to answer your questions. Will asks, what is a day in the life of a ranger like? Well, today I am standing on the back patio at the Human History Museum in Zion National Park. Behind me are the temples and towers of the Virgin. Virgin. And my day is pretty much like this every single day, filled with beautiful nature and great scenery. But more specifically, as a member of the Division of Interpretation here at Zion National Park, I spend a lot of my time talking to visitors, helping them decide how to spend their time in the park, what hikes they might want to do, and where they might want to take pictures and find the bathrooms if that's what they need. I also spend some time giving ranger-led programs like talks about geology and ecology and cultural history. My favorite talk to give is my evening program because I get to talk about astronomy and I love the stars. And when I'm not doing programs and I'm not helping visitors, then there's a little bit of my time that I spend in the office helping other rangers like me plan their programs and learn how to um, help the visitors of Zion National Park. So I'm also a trainer. That's the day in my life in a nutshell. Hello everybody, Ranger Lauren here. I'm here in beautiful Zion National Park on the patio of the Human History Museum. Behind me, the amazing canyon and amazing snake habitat. And funny enough that we're talking about snakes here today because uh, my lovely friend Julie has a question. <clears throat> how many visitors have been bitten by snakes each year? And how can you avoid any kind of snake encounter? Well, my friend, it's quite simple. They, we have no reported cases of snake bites, but that doesn't mean that we don't have snakes out here. And you can do a few things to stay away from snakes. First off, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to get bit by a snake. You're almost like five times more likely to get struck by lightning. But if you want to stay away from snakes, I'd stay out of areas like this. Places where there are down logs, rocky crevices, that's where snakes like to hide and where they love to live. So I would stay on the trail and stay on the patio of beautiful scenic points like this. And of course, if you hear a sound like this, you might be near a rattlesnake. So take in your surroundings, locate the snake, and slowly walk away. That's all you got to do, my friend, to stay safe out here on the trails and stay away from those beautiful snakes. Hi there, my name is Mike Large. I'm standing in front of the Human History Museum here at Zion National Park. We got a great question from Anna. She asked, what is the longest a park ranger has worked here in Zion? I don't know that exact answer, but I can tell you about a few rangers. Uh, I myself have worked here in Zion for 29 years as a park ranger. Prior to that, I worked seven years at Zion Lodge, so a grand total of 36 years here in Zion. I do know of another park ranger in Zion who's worked here for 32 years and the head of our road crew has been here for I believe about 30 years. So a lot of people have made the National Park Service a lifetime career. Zion of course is a great place to work and I've met some of the most wonderful people from throughout the world. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ranger Jason here at Zion National Park and I'm standing at Canyon Junction with the street wall towering above me. Julia asks the ranger, how do you become a National Park Ranger? Well, there's a few different ways. You could come out of college and have a background in education, outdoor recreation, something related to a field related to the National Park Service. There's also a lot of good internships at programs at many colleges. But if you're like me and you embarked on a different career for a long time, volunteering is an excellent way to get in. You can always go to volunteer.gov or usadobs.gov to learn more about the requirements. You'd be surprised at how much you can do in real life is experience that would be applicable to a National Park Career Service. Good luck out there. Hey, this is Ranger Brian here on the side of Riverside Walk to answer the question, what kind of wildflowers bloom in the spring? Uh, I'm right next to one of them. This is the Zion Shooting Star. Uh, and this kind of flower blooms in our hanging gardens, places where water is seeping from the rock to help species like this uh, survive. Um, other flowers that bloom in this habitat would be the golden columbine or the scarlet monkey flower. But of course, there are dozens of other 
wildflowers that are blooming this time of year. Uh, and our website or the Zion Wildflower app will help you learn more about those. Hey, this is Ranger Avery, and we have a question from James, who's 10 years old, who wants to know what is the tallest peak in the park? There are a lot of tall peaks out here, as you can see behind me. Some of the tallest in the park are right outside the museum. And up there with the flat top, that is called the West Temple. That's the tallest sandstone cliff in the world. But there is a taller peak than that up in Kolob Canyons, and it is called Horse Ranch Mountain, over 8,000 feet. But it's out in the wilderness, so not a lot of people see that one. Thanks for your question, James. All right, hello everyone. My name is Ranger Elsie. I work in the education department here at Zion National Park. I am standing in front of the incredibly beautiful Zion Canyon, and I am answering Gracie, age 12's question of what animals live here in Zion National Park. And let me tell you, so many animals live right here. Actually, almost over 400 different species, including things like bighorn sheep, tarantulas, rattlesnakes, lots and lots of birds, mountain lions. But the most likely animal you'll see here in Zion National Park is in fact the rock squirrel, which looks like this. Athletic, ready to run around, nice and, uh, you know, muscled, very full of energy. But really, a lot of the rock squirrels that call Zion National Park home don't look like this trim, athletic one. Instead, they look like this. A little bit more chunky. It's got some pudge on it. And that's because when people come here, a lot of the times they want to feed these squirrels, right? Because they are incredibly cute. But it's actually really bad for the squirrels. So instead of being able to run around and find all the food, our, uh, our chunky friend here, it starts relying on visitors for its food. And not only does it get fat, but it doesn't know how to feed itself. Another problem with feeding our squirrels is that they come to expect it. So if you are eating your lunch, you're having the most gorgeous picnic with your friends and family, and a squirrel comes up and you give it a little bit of wave, it might take a look at your finger and think, hmm, that looks like a delicious Cheeto, and take a huge bite. So when people ask what is the most dangerous animal that I can encounter in Zion National Park, we do have to tell them as rangers that it is in fact the rock squirrel. So it's really important that all of the wildlife here in Zion National Park, it stays wild. And we give it all the space and the respect that every single living creature here deserves. Hi there, I'm Ranger Kelly and I'm standing behind the Human History Museum and you're looking at the West Temple. I'm here today to answer Joe's question about what is the best season or time to visit here. And the best time to visit Cyan is all the time. Spring and fall bring cooler temperatures, which makes it a safer condition to hike in. They also bring wonderful colors between spring's blooming flowers and fall's changing leaves. Summer is the busiest time here in Zion and that can bring other things to watch out for. Monsoon season happens roughly in the summertime and that can bring nice beautiful mornings and then downpours in the afternoon. But by far winter is my favorite season between the falling snow and the cooler temperatures. The best uh, season to visit Zion is the season you are prepared for. Hey there, I'm Ranger Kyle. I'm here in the Human History Museum in Zion National Park and I'm here to answer a question from Junior Ranger Tom. Junior Ranger Tom asks us, what is the best time of year to visit the Narrows in Zion National Park? So I'm here at the relief map showing the topographical relief of Zion National Park to help answer that question, Tom, okay? And it's not an easy question to answer, but it's a good one. Many adults ask us that question all year round. When you decide to go into the Narrows, depends on a few things. The time of year, like you're cueing into, but also the flash flood potential, okay? Throughout the year, the river will change its temperature and level, and that can also affect its potential for flash floods. So let's start out right now in the springtime. 
In the springtime, it's really difficult, sometimes impossible to even go into the narrows because of how high the water level is. Snow melting in the upper regions of the park enters the river and it causes the level to maintain really high uh, you know, depth. So I can't even go into the narrows right now if I wanted to and neither can the general public. Now fast forward to summertime and let's take a look at the narrows and see what happens when the summertime arrives. So you've got the large main canyon of the park and then if you look up here, it gets very narrow, kind of like a hallway where the river, you know, and the walls close in on the river. In the summertime, we get these big things called monsoon rainstorms. And all that rain will fall down in this area. And if you look at the map, it's angled ever so slightly with all these little canyons into the Virgin River where the Narrows is. So all that rain rushes down and creates what's called a flash flood. They're very difficult to predict. And so in the summertime, you might be able to get in there and the water is nice and cool, like 60 degrees, and the daytime temperatures are like 100 degrees, um, but there's a chance that it's a little more dangerous than average. So you always have to check in with rangers to see if it'll be safe or not. In the fall, the temperatures are a little cooler, so you might have to wear some protective gear, but there are fewer people entering the Narrows. And then in the wintertime, there's not as many people as the rest of the year, but you sometimes have to rent a large suit that divers sometimes wear in cold water to help protect you from how chilly it can be. The water temperatures can literally be freezing and they're still gonna get up to here on me. So, there's not a perfect time of year, Tom, to go into the Narrows, but depending on what you're looking for, you can always ask a ranger when you're here and we'll tell you what the conditions are like. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Have a great day, okay, Tom? Hi everyone, my name is Gretchen. I'm a ranger here in Zion National Park and I'm here to answer your questions. Ella asks, what is your favorite part of, about being a ranger? I really had to think about this because there's so many parts of my job I love, but I think my favorite part about being a ranger is the ability I have to be a real nerd. Um, as a ranger, you're expected to know everything there is to know about the geology, ecology, cultural history of this place. And we're standing in the Zion Library that has books on all of the subjects that you could possibly want to learn about Zion National Park. And so I get to, in my spare time, come into the park library, get a book, geek out on it a little bit, learn more about Zion National Park, and then I use that knowledge to share with my visitors. So that is definitely my favorite part about being a ranger. Hi, my name is Ranger Ben. I'm here in Zion National Park. Uh, specifically, I'm in Zion Canyon, uh, one of the main areas of Zion National Park. And I'm here today to answer a question from Haley. Uh, Haley asked a great question, what is the coolest rock formation in this park? And so, uh, answering for myself personally, I think that the coolest rock formation here would be the Great White Throne, which stands tall behind me. So, uh, the Great White Throne, obviously, is a very impressive cliff. Uh, from where I'm standing now, the top of the Great White Throne is over 2,000 feet higher than where we stand. Uh, it's a, uh, the cliffs are white, uh, as are many of the cliffs around, uh, hence the name Great White Throne. Uh, it's a monolith. You'll notice that it kind of stands out there on its own, uh, not surrounded by anything. So it, uh, it's one of the tallest natural uh, rock monoliths in the world. Uh, it's a very impressive feature. Uh, Any time that I come up into the canyon, uh, I'm always struck by this particular view right here where I'm standing. It's great too. Uh, if you can hear the sound of the river behind me, there's birds chirping all around. Sometimes we even get to see some of our California condors fly through this area. Uh, so that's it. That's, uh, that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, there are many other uh, interesting rock formations here in the park, but for me personally, I think the uh, Great White Throne is the coolest. So Haley, I would like to thank you uh, for your wonderful question. Uh, it's a great question I'm sure that many other people are wondering as well. Uh, so thank you, and uh, if you get a chance to look forward to having you come out and visit Zion National Park. Well there you have it. Uh, I'm Ranger Brian signing off here at the Human History Museum. Uh, if you still have questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and we'll try to get to them there. Bye.